everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm right there with Nikki Kinzer. Hello. Nikki, it's a digital Hello. episode, sort of. <laughs> sort of? Sort of. It is. What does that mean? Well, it's a, we've got a nice follow-up question that we got uh, via email we're going to be talking about before we dig into a few tech things. Yes. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. It's June. You know, schools are letting out. We're about to do that annual context change. And I think no better time uh, to, to than these big spring cleaning kind of summer transitions to actually uh, make sure you're living up to your technology uh, your aspirational technology habits. How about that? Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Before we do that, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. Get to know us a little bit better. Obviously, listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list and we will let you know every time a new episode is posted and you can subscribe to the show for free anywhere the finest podcasts are served. Find us on Twitter and Facebook at Take Control ADHD, and you can call us at 503-664-4ADD, just like this listener did with this great question. Hi, Nikki and Pete. I am calling with one of my organization challenges and questions. One of the things that's the hardest for me is dealing with going through my son's clothes as he outgrows things. It can be hard enough for me to try to keep up with the season changes of getting things in and out, but when it comes to what he's outgrowing, as I pull things out of the drawers, and I'm trying to decide what am I going to do with them. Am I going to be giving them to a friend who's needing some clothes? Am I going to try to take them to a consignment store to make some money off of it? Or am I going to just do a big drop-off at the Salvation Army or Goodwill or a place like that? And how am I going to organize things? Am I keeping? Am I going to keep some clothes? Am I going to try to sort them by size? Is this something I think that I might use again if I have another child? I definitely go into overthinking, overanalyzing. Oftentimes things just get put in a pile. My husband finds a pile, doesn't know that, oh, this pile is the going to give to so-and-so pile or this pile is the going to goodwill pile. And he just throws them all back in the drawers and everything gets very confusing. So what is the best way to kind of approach this organizing challenge and the best way to kind of get everything out of your house once you've decided that what you're going to do with it. Okay. So I think that's a great question and very timely. Uh, How do you want to pull this one apart, Nikki? Well, and and just real quick, she actually followed it up with an email to to sort of put in summary what she was thinking. And and I thought it was really great insight on her part. It's just really all of the decisions that she has to make here that's really clouding the process for her. Um, And then trying to figure out, you know, are you doing, should you be doing the practical thing or the compassionate thing? And that's where it really all becomes um, very overwhelming. So I thought that was very good insight for her um, to to bring to my attention and to her own attention, right? Um, Via email. Yeah, right. (laughs) Following up the call. But, you know, decision making is is certainly a big part of the organizing process, and uh, it just doesn't come naturally uh, for people with ADHD, and it's so easy to get stuck here. And, you know, we want people to continue to to move forward in a way, and I think that you can do that by really simplifying the process and just make it easy on yourself. So let go of the pressure around if you're doing the right thing. Um, And I think that's really where this is stemming from for her is that, I, you know, gosh, I I feel like I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be doing something wrong by just donating it, you know, or not, not separating it and giving it to people. Um, So my, my philosophy really is if you don't have a lot of time, this is not something that's real fun for you and you would like to just get it done, there is absolutely no shame in putting those clothes into a bag and donating them. This is practical and it is compassionate. You're not throwing them away. You're not, um, you know, you are donating them. You are giving them to somebody that, that may need them. So I just wouldn't put so much pressure on yourself. And I wouldn't worry about how the clothes are organized when you're giving them to the donation center because they have to sort it out anyway. So don't put a whole lot of thought into that either. Just put them in the, in the bag, make sure they're clean. I think that's a nice thing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. yeah. We we are not savages. No. Um, In regards to selling them, you know, if some people really love to do this, you know, they love to go on eBay, they love to that whole bidding process and everything, but other people don't. Um, if you have the time for it, great. If it's something that you need to do for financial reasons, financial reasons, then I can understand wanting to to go that route. Um, but if that's not the case, I wouldn't bother with trying to resell the clothes. This can be very time consuming and there's a lot of steps that are involved in selling and the payoff just may not be worth the time and the stress involved. So that's kind of my opinion on Mm -hmm. that. Mm Um, as far as giving them to other people that you know, again, I really think it's kind of, um, depends on the state of mind that you're in at the time. Um, 
you know, maybe in this lot, they don't, they don't go to other people that, you know, and you just send them to, to your donation center. And maybe next time, next season, you know, you will be able to sort it out and give it to some different people. I just, again, put the pressure off and, and don't worry about it too much. If you don't have a lot of time, don't worry about it. This is the same though. I mean, one of the things she said was that, you know, she sometimes earmarks for, you know, future children that she may have. Right. You know, and that's yes. a, that that's one that that really that that sticks with me, too, because it's I, I know that instinct. You want to just sort of nestle uh, nested away someplace because you never know. But the bottom line is you have that just as you might be donating to Goodwill, you could go to Goodwill and completely restock your your collection of kids clothes uh, in, in very short order and uh, very cost effectively. Absolutely. And, I, you know, and I just yeah, that's a really good point. I'm a little hesitant to um, save for the future children. I mean, just I understand, again, that instinct like you're saying, but you don't know. I mean, if you have a boy, you may have a girl next time. I mean, yeah. you just don't know what the situation is going to be. Um, and, you know, if you feel the need to save, just don't save everything. Just save a few pieces. Don't save everything. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think that, there's a way to kind of curve that and kind of meet in the middle a little bit. Yeah, right. Um, and just real quick on a side note, once you do get those um, those uh, clothes in a donation bag, get them out of your house as soon as possible. At the very least, um, put them in the back of your car. This way you're going to see your progress faster with your organizing efforts. Um, and when you see progress, then, you, you know, you have more motivation and you're more inspired to, to keep to keep going. Um, and of course, when you have less, there's less to organize, which is always a win win for for everybody. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. definitely get those out and uh, don't worry about it. Don't, don't second guess yourself. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's it. I, and she admitted it. <laughs> it's that whole idea of, you know, I know I'm overthinking. Well, that's right. that admission. It's the first step. Right. Right. Awareness. Yep. Uh, so, you know, it's, some of this is, is, was inspiring to me as I was thinking about kind of an outline of going through some things for, for technology stuff. And it ended up being kind of a hodgepodge because I started this conversation with my wife about, you know, the, the things that she does in five minutes regarding her technology, like when she's standing in line, when she's, you know, waiting in the pickup line at school to pick up our, our son, like what are the things that she pulls out her phone to do? And we've talked before about, you know, the, the things that you take your phone out to do always, you know, tend to trend toward Facebook if you're not otherwise aware. Right. Mm-hmm. You'll just open Facebook or you'll open a game or something like that. Uh, and so what are the things that you can do to rethink how you're using your devices, computer, phone, everything that that help you, you know, move some things forward in your life? And so I thought, here's what here's what I, I want to encourage you to do. If you have five minutes, you're standing in line, you're sitting in traffic, you're in a cab, you're on a bus, you're on a train anywhere. Your phone or laptop is handy, but you're not otherwise driving because that would be bad. That's right. right. (laughs) Yeah. Put that in there. First, let's Mm -hmm. let's do the the spring clean on your phone, right? I mean, this is a big one that helps you refresh not only your workflow for many of us where this phone is our number one device, but so so also your mind too. And so here's the challenge that I would have regarding your this is the biggest challenge, I think, of the week. Move all your apps to your second screen on your phone. Oh, interesting. Right. So when you open your phone, this is the closet rule, right? So, uh, you know, you turn all your hangers around in your closet and see what hangers stick around. Move all your apps to your second screen. And then over the course of the day, uh, week, month, you, any app that you find you're moving over to that second screen to grab, move it back to the, to the home screen. Oh, interesting. See and then you really stands. see, yeah, you yeah. really see what you're using all the time. You know what? I did it and, and, uh, I did it about a month ago and I ended up with four apps on my home screen. Four Mm -hmm. that I used every single day. Now, since then, that awareness has been really empowering. And I have moved some other apps that I get to not every day, but I have moved them back to the home screen. But generally, my home screen is pretty sparse as a result of thinking really clearly about what it is that I do. But that's only part one. The second part of the challenge in your daily five minutes after this first spell of moving your apps, delete one app every day that you haven't used. Just dump it. Mm -hmm. Dump it, dump it, dump it. You need to clear your activity load. And unless you look at an app and you know for sure exactly what you are doing with it, you are not doing anything with it. So dump it. Clear it off of your things. I run into people with dozens of pages of apps and folders full of apps and widgets and things and they don't use them at all and i'm not even i don't even care about load on the device that's not really a concern anymore what i care about is the cognitive load that you have carrying around all these apps every time you open your phone it's screaming at you of things that you you probably don't even remember 
why you downloaded these apps. It's just screaming so at true. you to think about, oh, I downloaded this or my kid downloaded this, you know, the, the Kim Kardashian game. Why do I have that? Why, you know, those are the kinds of things that you want to think about with when you're spring cleaning your phone and that will help you spring clean your workflow. And that's really what we're talking about here. Okay. That's so cool. I want to do it right now. Like I got to put my phone away because I just deleted an app. Yeah. I got to like, I got to focus on you and not on my phone. More okay. power to you. That, see, <laughs> yeah. there you. See how easy it is? Uh, well, and I just have to say real quick. Yeah. Some of the app, like the app that I just deleted was an app that I used to look at before Pinterest. So it, it is interesting how things kind of replace them, you know, yes. replace themselves with other things that are even bigger and better. Like Abs- Pinterest is better than this app that I just had. So Absolutely. Interesting. Okay. Okay, the second one in your five minutes, process your notes, right? This is a thing that I, and I don't know if you're like me, I take notes throughout the day. Like I write on paper, I write in my iPad, I like I, I take notes of my activities, meeting notes, I, I sket, jot little things down that I need to remember. Don't forget to actually turn those into actions. And you can do this usually in five minutes or less. You can just look, review your notes and make sure you're creating a task for each all of the actionable outcomes of the day. For me, I use good notes for my handwritten notes on my iPad. I adore it. Uh, and I don't even have the new fancy Apple Pencil, right? I'm using Pencil by 53. I don't even have it powered on. The handwriting is fluid and fast. I really like it. Uh, I take notes throughout my daily meetings. And at the end of the day, I spend five minutes turning those notes into action items on my to-do list. Uh, and I, I should say as an aside, uh, we had a listener write in asking questions about journaling systems, specifically the bullet journal. Uh, and I was going to talk about that a little bit today, but I decided I want to do a whole digital or a whole tools episode on journaling systems because it, it actually opens up a lot more opportunity to talk about these cool things. So that's coming. Oh, um, good. But, but the, I absolutely use these handwritten tools in this virtual journal to actually keep notes, turn them into action items. Take your five minutes. It's a super easy thing to do to make sure nothing drops through the cracks. There you go. That's another one. Now, All right. this third option is uh, Lumosity. Have you, have you heard of Lumosity? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think I have. No. They they market it as brain training, right? You play these little games like math games and and spatial awareness games, and it's on your phone, and you and I, I think it's a iPad, whatever, all your devices. There, it's a they have a hefty marketing push, and you can open it up and play these little games for like ten minutes. And now I ask my wife because I don't do Lumosity, I I never have, but she does it every day. And I asked her why because you know I I think the the research is dubious about whether or not playing these games actually lead to long-term, you know, brain sharpening in mm-hmm. spatial awareness and, you know, uh, over time. I, it's just not clear that you're going to improve, you know, in other domains because you are able to do m- math really quickly in this game. You may get better at the game, but the connection to other domains is is dubious. That's that's all. I, I don't know for sure. I just know that there are claims out there dubious. like that. Dubious. That's dubious is word. the word. <laughs> dubious. It is one of my favorites. <laughs> Uh, but sometimes you need to push buttons, right? Sometimes you well, just... I was going to say, is she having fun? Is she yes. having fun? I mean, and really, isn't that what matters? Yes, that is exactly what matters. That's exactly <laughs> what matters. Because for so many of us, again, that drive to push buttons leads to Facebook. And if you can do fun games, if this company has managed to create a fun game that actually does challenge you in the moment, even if you're only getting better at doing math quickly in your head in that game, uh, you know, is that so wrong? Now, here's the yeah. benefit of it. This is what I love so much for our audience you can't play forever if you don't sign up for a paid plan you can only play a few games a day and then it's off for the rest of the day you can't hyper focus on it as long as you don't get out your wallet don't get out (laughs) your wallet right you can actually play for just as long as you need to play that one little session and uh, and actually, um, you know, engage your brain. In some cases, this is a great way to just sort of get the juices flowing, right? Turn it on, play for a few minutes in the morning before you go into your first uh, your first event for the day. So that's the thing. For me, I'm actually exactly the opposite. I'm playing Alto's Adventure, and you can play that forever. So don't don't even download it. It's really addictive. Well, you and know, now everybody's going to go download it. I know that's what I do because I'm super is. subversive. That is super <laughs> subversive. I've never heard of it. What is it? Or do you even want to go there? Maybe we should. I so badly want to go there. You play a snowboarder in in the Alps, and you're catching your runaway uh, llamas. 
Like run away you're llamas. snowboarding. Yes, they're, they've run away. Your llamas have run away, and you have to s- snowboard down this hill and catch them. Oh, and you think, oh, my geez. gosh, this is so dumb. And then you play it, and the music is so soft, and the graphics are so beautiful. I mean, you're, you play through snowstorms and rainstorms, and you do flips and things, and it ends up being a little meditation, a little meditation that could last me two or three hours. I was going to say, so, how long is that yeah, meditation it, it's lasting? It's not yeah. good. It's not All good. Right. So anyway. All right. So let's okay. talk about uh, on your computer. Um, I... So this this came when I sat down at a colleague's computer. I was working on site at a, a client's location for a video shoot the other day. And I sat down at the computer. I needed to write a quick email to log into Gmail. And I, I couldn't find it because the desktop had over a thousand items on it. Uh, so many items that they were stacked on top of one another. Um, files and folders on top of files and folders. And it was a disaster. And I, I mentioned, you know, earlier, I said that this whole metaphor of turning on your phone and having it screaming at you. This is exactly that experience uh, when the desktop becomes so incredibly cluttered that the first thing you see when you turn on your machine is, oh, my God, look at all this stuff. Look at all the noise. I'm so guilty right now. <laughs> I have photos all over my desktop because of this project that I'm working on. And and I use a lot of photos in my newsletters and sure. blog posts and stuff. So I just have all these photos. And yeah, I, I know. And, you know, I can say it is so frustrating when you're looking for a particular photo right. and you can't remember what you titled it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's terrible. It is terrible. It is cognitive noise. And and I think it, it is in, it's that sort of invisible, insidious noise that you don't even know is the thing that's driving you crazy. But, uh, you know, the, the fear is that when you jump into your machine in the morning, you see all these things and it let it forces you to sort of lose track of what you really need to do first, because there's all this stuff that is probably in motion and probably involves those files and folders. Uh, so, all right, there I have another thing I need to do. Too. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's I'm right. not sorry. This is good. It's, it's empowering. Good. Yes. There, I have two app recommendations if you want to go this route. The, the bottom line is if you could go nuclear and just move all of those into a folder, right, and put mm-hmm. it somewhere in your My Documents or something and start working from there. And that's actually not a terrible thing because, you know, the technical problem with this kind of workflow when you run into a person with many, many large files sitting on their desktop is the operating system is actually generating constant previews of these files so you can access them and look at them quickly. It's anything that's displayed on the screen, the operating system is generating a preview of it so you can see it. And that does eventually, um, you know, in the old days, it was terrible. I mean, that would be a key reason your computer would get slow. Eventually, on modern hardware, it, it, it will start slowing things down. But it, it, that's not the number one reason to take care of this issue. Really, it's about the cognitive noise. The app recommendations I have are apps that will help you do this automatically as soon as you learn how to use them and trust them. And I recommend you invest in these apps, one of these apps, because they are incredibly powerful. The first one, uh, I have one for Windows and one for Mac. Uh, the version for Windows is File Juggler, uh, and the version for Mac is called Hazel. Uh, links will be in the show notes. What do these do? They run in the background of your computer. They are system level items. They are running, and you create rules to tell these apps what folders to watch and what to do with those folders when certain conditions are met. For example, I have Hazel for Mac running, and I have it running on my downloads folder, right? So every time I download a file, a PDF, an image, whatever it is, anything in that downloads folder that is older than seven days, I want you to move it to trash. And now I don't even have to think about it. The assumption is that when I download something into my downloads folder, if it's important to me, within the first seven days... I'm going to do something with it. I'm going to put it where I need to put it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to, you know, it's a bill or a statement. I'm going to add it to Evernote, whatever it is. After seven days, it's old and I'm going to delete it, right? So that's, that's one thing. Now, Hazel can also search inside of files. So let's say you download a PDF and you save that PDF into your fancy downloads folder. Hazel might look for files that are of the type PDF. It will open up that file inside its little script. And it will search for a date, for example, and maybe it will search for uh, a name of a company, like say it's PGE is your uh, electric company and or, or gas company. And uh, you have Hazel automatically rename this file 
to PGE statement with the current date that it pulled from inside the PDF, and then file it in a subfolder in your documents. So automatically, Hazel is in the background performing actions on files and folders as they come into your computer and keeping things clean for you so you don't have to think so hard about it. All those images you talked about, you can have Hazel watch for those images, and as soon as it sees an image hit your desktop, you can have it file it away in your Photos app. Uh, so where that's, cool. w- that's designed to help you work with photos. I mean, that's right. that's why it exists there, or have it you know move it wherever you want to move it. So these apps, Hazel and File Juggler, are very very powerful. Um, and e- even if you just have these things watch a single folder or your desktop to keep things clean and just move them out of the way, move files and folders out of the way, can really help you clear that cognitive noise. So two great great apps. The last thing is all about the love. <laughs> Right. Aww. So I, this is, we talked a while ago about day one. You remember day one, the yes. journaling app. So I love day one so much. And this is one of those things, you know, the recommendation so many moons ago was when you really want to go to Facebook, go to day one and write a quick journal entry about what you're doing right now. Well, mm-hmm. I was thinking about our, our photos and the, and the number of photos that I take every day. We take a ton of photos, again, events and games and parties. Like we have just so many more photos than I ever had when I was growing up. So take your five minutes, take your five minute tech break to just scroll through the last couple of days of photos that you've taken and find one, just one that's your favorite. And maybe you open it up and you brighten it up a little bit. Maybe you sharpen it a touch using the the built in tools on your phone, right? And then share it with people you love. Just that one photo, not a whole album of every photo of your child's last game, just, just the one that really represents that event for you. Put it in day one and write a quick story about that photo. Post it on Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest. Just do something with that photo that amounts to more than just simply collecting it, right? Mm -hmm. Make it your five-minute story of the day that forces you to stop, to focus, and to reflect on the moment right there in front of you to remind you what's important. I like that. There you go. It's all about the love. That's nice. That's it. So five things. You can do each of them in five minutes every day. And not get too overwhelmed about them, not let them take over your life, and uh, and then get back to business. That's that's well, my story for the day. And I'm thinking when you say five minutes, like it's just taking five minutes to to do a couple of deletions, yep. right? I mean, it's that's not right. to is that even a word? Deletions? It absolutely is. All right, good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not taking the time to do it all at one time. Exactly. Like to, right. You're yeah. just kind of chipping away at it, is which what is I'm getting at absolutely right? right. That's the whole point. Chip away at it. If you it, this is this is what I mean by it, by your response to uh, our our listener voicemail is so important because it's you know. Don't try to take on everything at once. Don't try to capture all of these things at once. You just just take a few minutes. If you work a few minutes, delete that one app. You know what you gain back. It, it will pay back in dividends. Uh, you know it, it's magical. Awesome. Yeah, I like it, Pete. You thank go. you. You are so welcome, and thank you everybody for downloading and listening to this very episode. I hope some of these tools have helped you or will help you. And uh, tell us your story. If, if some of these work, what are the tri- tips that you use? Uh, to help spring clean your tech and your mind in the process. That's that's what I want to hear. So thanks, everybody, for downloading. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm-hmm.